We thank you for your many blessings over our lives. You are the keeper of our lives. You are the keeper of our souls. And we thank you, God, for being our keeper. You are our shepherd. And as we stand today, we can say, as the psalmist said, I shall not want because you are supplying all of our needs. Thank you, God, for just blessing us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for allowing us to share in this new day that you have given us. This is your day, God. Your plan, your purpose, what you want us to accomplish, the places where you need us to be, those people you're placing in our path so we can witness to them, God. Whatever you have in mind for us, your purpose for letting us see this day, we want to fulfill that this day is not about us. This day is about you. Not only is this day about you, every day is about you because if it was not for you, God, none of us could rise and see the breaking of another day. So Lord, we thank you. We yield to your Lordship. We yield to your sovereignty. We ask you to transform this environment, God, this place into a tabernacle where we can just come and to experience your presence and your power, God. We can come this morning and receive direction, instruction, deliverance, healing, breakthrough, God, whatever we need. We believe you, Lord, that as we symbol in a place like this, while you're manifesting your presence, while you're moving, God, that all kinds of things happen, Lord. You'll bless, you'll heal, you'll deliver, you'll do mighty things in our lives. And we just thank you for an opportunity to be here today. Thank you for safety. Safety is of you, God. Thank you for healing. Healing is of you, God. Healing is from you. Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sickness. Thank you, God, for health and strength. Thank you for enclosing us in our right minds that we can assemble in a place like this to worship you. So we bless your name. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. This morning, I want to invite your attention to the division of Psalm once again, to the division of Psalms. And this morning, I want to look at Psalm 127. Last week, the last two weeks, we've been looking at Psalm 126. This morning, I want to look at Psalm 127, and I want to lift two verses from Psalm 127. That these are verses 1 and 2, uh, are the verses I want to read this morning. They are verses 1 and 2, Psalm 127. So turn over there with us, if you will, as we consider these passages this morning. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. These words are recorded, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Unless the Lord build the house, the labor, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved sleep. This morning, I want to just talk from this subject, unless God is in it. Unless God is in it. For the past two weeks, as stated earlier, I've been teaching from Psalm 126, which was, which is a psalm of ascent. Like Psalm 126, Psalm 127 is also identified as a psalm of ascent. In other words, this psalm was sung as the pilgrims made their ascent to Jerusalem to worship. As we read verses 1 and 2, uh, particularly in verse 1, it is clear what was on the pilgrims' minds and who was on the pilgrims' mind as they made their ascent. Look at verse 1 again. They said, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. It is clear again that the Lord was on their mind. The Lord was on their minds as they made their way to worship. 
I want to ask this question. As you made your way to worship this morning, what was on your mind? As, as just think about it. Why, why you, why you peruse down the highway, or drove down the highway, and hopefully that you didn't speed. But, but what was on your minds as you press your way to worship? Were you thinking more about him, or were you thinking more about yourself? Were you thinking more about him or were you thinking more about others? Were you thinking more about him or were you thinking more about what's going to happen or were you thinking about what was what's not going to happen? You see, what was on your minds as you pressed your way to worship this morning? When we have God on our minds as we make our way to worship, our worship experience will become more fulfilling. And also our worship will be more in line with what God expects from us as we gather for corporate worship. It is clear once again that God was on their mind. They were thinking about God. They were thinking about how important God was to them. When we were worshiping in buildings, we oftentimes reflected on the words of Psalm 100, where the psalmist said these words in Psalm 100. He said, make a joyful noise, or this translation said, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. When we press our way, when we are on our way to worship, God should be on our minds. You see, in Psalm 100, I see people coming in with thanksgiving and praise. And, and the reason they were coming in with thanksgiving and praise is they had God on their minds even before they entered into the gates, into the courts. When we have God on our minds, we gather in places where we can corporately give thanksgiving and give praise unto the Lord because we remember who he is. We remember all of the things that the Lord has done for us. You see, just because we're not gathering inside in buildings for corporate worship, there should be no difference in our approach to worship. I, I understand that this environment is an environment that we were not used to prior to the pandemic. But just because we are in a different setting, where we have to worship in a different environment. Our approach to worship should always be the same. You see, our place of worship might have changed, but the one we worship, he's still the same. Therefore, when we drive up in our vehicles or when we're sitting out in our lawn chairs, we should always give thanks and give praise unto the Lord. You see, you shouldn't just have to thank and praise God when you're inside of a building. But while you're sitting in your cars, while you're sitting out right now, do you understand God deserved to receive our expressions of gratitude and God is still praiseworthy? Our environment shouldn't determine our thankfulness or God's praiseworthiness. If you drove up this morning thinking about what the Lord has done for you, I want you to understand that right now you have a reason to say thank you, Lord. If you came up this morning thinking about God on your drive to the church, you have reason to bless his holy name. 
and give thanks unto the Lord. Listen, you're not in the building, but you are in your vehicle. You're sitting, some of you, in your lawn chair. Will you just right now tell God thank you? Will you just give praise to God right where you are? I I'm telling you that if you came up this morning with God on your mind, as you look back over yesterday or even this morning, then you ought to understand that God is still good. You ought to understand that you can still bless the name of the Lord. When the psalmist said, I bless the Lord at all times, he wasn't talking about being in a specific place. He wasn't talking about being in a building. He wasn't talking about being in his home. He was just saying, anywhere I am, I bless the Lord at all times. Why? Because when I think about what God has done for me, then I have a reason to bless the name of the Lord. Listen, maybe this don't resonate with you, but it's all right with me. And I hope it's all right with you if I just stand here and bless the name of the Lord. I bless God because even as I stand here this morning, you don't know what I've been through all week long. But I know being able to stand here and proclaim the word of the Lord, I got reason to give thanks to God. I got reason to praise God. And sometimes people don't understand because they don't know your story. Oh yes, I give thanks unto the Lord. And so if that bothers you, just act like I'm not talking to you because I'm still going to thank God. God, I just praise you this morning for sustaining me. I thank you for keeping me in my right mind. And I'm not saying this to you. I'm just thanking God for myself. I thank you, God, because what could have been, it did not happen. And when Satan tried to take me out, God, you kept me. So I give praise unto your name. I bless the name of the Lord. Yes, and I'm sure, again, I'm not the only one because God has done some great things in your life this week. I understand that these times that we're living in, they are tumultuous times. You see, and because of the times, we can become absorbed in our problems, our circumstances, and even in just issues of life. Someone said in one of the Bible study lessons, I think it was the week before, when we start talking about reasons why Christians relapse, someone said life just happens. I tell you, and that's just the reality. Life just happens. And as life happens, then sometimes we can become absorbed in our circumstances and in our problems of life. And as glaring as these things may be, our circumstances, our problems in life, and life just happening. It should not push away our ability to recall God's goodness, God's grace, and God's gifts. You see, even in tumultuous times when everything is not perfect in our lives, we still ought to recall what the Lord has done for us. I just want you to think about it today, what the Lord has done for you. And some of you might say, well, I can't think of anything God has done to me that was so spectacular. Well, just think about what didn't happen in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think about what did happen, but every once in a while, we ought to think about what didn't happen. If you think about what didn't happen in your life, then you can still find reason to give praise unto God. I mean, think about what didn't happen. People are lying on their hospital bed right now from COVID. But look at you, you're here. People have limbs that cannot move. But look at you, you can use your limbs. People have a mouth and they can't talk. But look at you this morning. You have these faculties, the use of your limbs and abilities in your body. And so many things could have happened to you, but they didn't happen. And I want you to understand that you've got reason to give God praise. 
I, I, you, you, you see, some folk think that they think things have to be perfect in order for a Christian to praise. And I stood up here this morning and I blessed the name of the Lord because things are not perfect. But if you're waiting for a perfect situation to give praise to God, you may never praise God. Sometimes you got to give God praise even when things are not going the way you want them to go. You ought to still recall God's goodness, God's grace, and God's gifts and give God some praise. You see, Paul and Silas, they were heard singing and praying at midnight. Were they in an optimum situation? No, they were not. They had been beaten and they were in prison. They were in pain, but they still found a reason to give God praise. They praised him at midnight when some folk would have been sleeping. They were bound with chains. They still could give God praise. Listen, sometimes you got to praise your way through. Sometimes your breakthrough may hinge on your ability to praise God. God, even while you're going through some things. Listen, I understand that life happens. I, I understand such situations, circumstances are not perfect, but will you just praise God while you're going through your own storm? Sometimes, oh yeah, sometimes, sometimes you got to just praise your way through. I understand we are social distancing and somebody, you may be in your car and if your car is impeding your praise, you can get out of your car. You can walk around your car. You can run around your car. You can give God praise because you understand what God has done for you. You see, I believe our ability to praise is connected to our ability to recall. When we can recall what he has done, then it leads us into a place of praise. The psalmist, as he wrote these words, reflects on, he recalls, he remembers who God is. As noted, this psalm is a psalm of ascent used by pilgrims as they went up to worship. Now, I, I said that it is clear from reading verses 1 and 2, and particularly verse 1, what was on these people's minds as they went to worship. However, I need to remind us that God shouldn't only be on our minds when we come to worship. God should be on our minds every day. Having God on our minds daily impacts the way we live daily. Each day we need to live in the awareness of God, not, not just on Sunday. Every day we need to live in the awareness of God, that God exists, that God, he deserves to be Lord in our lives because we want him to be Lord over our lives. He deserves to be Lord in our lives. Every day we should live in an, in an awareness of who God is. Remembering God should not just be relegated to Sunday. Every day God gives us, we see that day because of God's mercy and God's grace. N none of us deserve to see any day except God is merciful and gracious to us. You see, when we laid down last night, we didn't lie down so good that we had to get up this morning. But, but it's because God gave us new mercy. We're here today. And, and we need to recall the fact that each day that we have, it is not our day, it's the Lord's day. And God just lets us, he allows us to be a part of his day. And so every day we get up, we, we need to remember God. And it's sad but true, but God gives us a day to be a part of his day. And the very God who wakes us up every day is the same God that is often forgotten. We get up and we act like we made the day. And we fail to remember that this is the Lord's day. And, and I think sometimes we, we need to adopt the words of the psalmist. And this is not in the context of the writing. But the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or he said that I will rejoice and be glad in it. When God gives us a day, be aware that God didn't have to let you see that day. But because God gave you that day, you ought to always remember God. Live every day in the awareness of who God is. Not, not just when you need God. Remember God every day. And your remembrance, as I stated, it, 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 it connects to your ability to praise God. Your remembering God impacts the way you live your life every day, the way I live my life every day. If I can recall, if I can think about, if I can remember who God is and what God has done. The psalmist not only remembered God, he also realized he needed God. Look at what he said. He, he talks about unless the Lord build the house, those who build the house, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman watches in vain. You see, we need God. There are some folk who feel like they think that they don't need God. But even people who feel like they don't need the God, need God, they're going to one day have a reality check. Why they'll discover that they needed the Lord more than they thought. And today when we read the words of this psalm, the psalmist is trying to give us a reality check about God. He's trying to help us to understand that we too need the Lord. He points out the importance of having God in all that we do. He speaks of a labor laboring in vain who builds a house without God. He speaks of a watchman watching over the city in vain without God. The message about is simply broader than building a house or watching over a city. The message is simply telling us we need God in all of our affairs, not in just something. We need God in everything we do. Unless God is in our affairs, our efforts are futile. If the Lord is not in the mix, as the psalmist points out, a builder builds a house in vain. People are having problems in many areas of their lives because they're attempting to make things work without God. If you have a business, you need God in your business. If you're planning to get married, you need God leading you to marry the person you plan to marry. If you're looking for successful employment, you need God to guide you to the right place. If you are looking to have a home with a family, you need God in the midst. If you're making a purchase or investing in something, you need God in the mix. In other words, the psalm is stressing that every step that we take, we need to ask God to order our steps. And how many of you know today when you put God in front, God, he will order your steps. When we invite God, Lord, you take the forefront. I want to follow you. God, he will order our steps. The writer in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he had it right when the, when the writer said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Now look at what the, the writer in Proverbs said. He didn't say that the Lord would direct your path. He said the Lord will direct your paths. That lets me know that in every avenue that we take in life, if we would acknowledge the Lord and trust in him, the Lord would direct us in every path of life. This means that every step that I take, my steps can be ordered by God. And if God is ordering our steps, then we understand that things are going to work out all right as long as God is in the mix. You see, an omniscient God, he knows what to do in every situation. Consider his omniscience in Matthew chapter 17, verses 24 through 27. Listen at what Matthew's right here. He said, when they had come to Capernaum, 
Those who received the temple taxes came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? Verse 25, he said, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of this earth take custom of taxes from their sons or from strangers? Verse 26, Peter said to him, from strangers. Then Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Verse 27, nevertheless, lest we offend them, he said, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened his mouth, you would find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and for you. Now let's look at here. Now who else but God? Who else but God knew that a fish in the sea had the exact money that was needed to pay the tax. He looked at God being omniscient. He knew that there were many fishes in the sea, but he gave Peter some specific instructions. He said, Peter, don't, don't regard all the other fish in the sea. He said, the one that comes up first, that's the one that got his money in the mouth. Understand the Lord. He knows what to do in every situation. That's the kind of God I need working on my behalf. When I don't know what to do, don't know how to find what I need to find. When I don't know my way out of something, I need an omniscient God who knows everything. Look at the kind of God we serve. Who else but God? Who else but God knew what he knew? about the fish in the sea. Just as God met the need, you know, of himself and Peter, I want you to understand when God is in it, God is gonna take care of you. When it looks like there's not quite enough, as long as you got God in it, God, he will come through. I, I, don't, it, I don't care what the circumstance look like. If God is in it, then understand God, he's going to make a way somehow. You don't need to take a step without God. Don't depend on anything, anybody else. Make sure that God is in it. If the Lord is not in it, when a builder builds a house, the builder builds in vain. But then the writer goes on to say, if the Lord is not in it, while the watchman is watching over the city, the watchman watches in vain. You see, the psalmist understood that the watchman watches over the city to try to keep the city safe. But he also concludes that no matter how vigilant a watchman is, the watchman can't keep the city safe without God. You see, watchmen, no matter how vigilant they are, they grow weary sometimes. Watchmen, no matter how vigilant they are, sometimes they have to sleep. But when God is the watchman, God watches all the time. Psalm 121, he says, he, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not slumber, nor does he sleep. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shade at our right hand. The sun will not strike us by day, nor the moon by night. In other words, our very best efforts without God are not good enough. But when God is in it, God, he takes care of us. When God is in it, God, he works everything out all right. Our efforts without God are useless. They come to nothing. Oh, but when God is in it, God, he has a way of turning every situation where it works out all right. Before we make our next move, we need to invite God. Before we make our next move, we need to involve God. Our reliance must not be on ourselves or anything else. Our reliance must be on the Lord. I like what Moses said to the Lord as the Lord was directing them to move. In Exodus 33, the Lord had called Moses and some of the elders, and they had gone up into Mount Sinai. And then God instructed Moses that it was time to move from Mount Sinai to go on toward the land of promise. 
And Moses spoke back to the Lord now in Exodus chapter uh, 33, verse 15. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, do not bring us up from here. What Moses was saying to the Lord, he said, Lord, if you don't go, I don't want to go. God, I understand that there is a land of promise, but I need you in the midst of where we go. I need you guiding the way. Moses said, God, if you're not in it, I don't want to be in it. That's the way that I am this morning. I understand that unless God is in it, there's no way things are going to work out all right. I don't want to move without God. I don't want to depend on myself. Why? Because I make a mess out of things. I don't want to depend on anything else. My trust is in the Lord. And the Bible says that those who trust in the Lord, they'll be like Mount Zion. They cannot be removed. In other words, when I put God in everything that I'm in, I expect it to work out all right. No matter how dark it gets, if God is in it, God's going to shine through. No matter how deep the water gets, if God is in it, I cannot drown because you cannot drown God. If God is in it, God has to work it out for my good somehow. I want God in everything that I do. When I get up in the morning, I don't think it's my day. I know it's God's day. And I tell the Lord sometimes, help me to be where you want me to be. This is your day. It's not my day. I want you to be Lord in this day. I want you to be Lord over this day. I want you to order my steps. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to be where you want me to be. I want you in everything that I do. If I witness to somebody, I want you to be in it. If I get in trouble today, I want you to be in my trouble. Why? Because when God is in it, God, he works it out somehow. The psalmist said, unless the Lord build the house, those who build it, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord keep watch over the city, the watchman watches in vain. When God is in it, God, he takes the responsibility of making sure things work out just fine. Make sure that God is in it. My brothers and sisters, don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in other people. You put your trust in God. Do you understand that when God is in it, the devil can't stop it? As long as God is in it. If you remember the book of Acts, Acts chapter 5, where the apostles had been preaching the word of God. And these religious leaders had a problem with what the apostles were doing. And so they decided that they would try to stop them. But then there was a man named Gamaliel. He came to him and he said, listen, you know, the folks started some stuff and it didn't work out. It soon fizzled out. But then he said to them, if God is in it, ain't no way you're going to stop it. If God is in it, you're going to find yourself fighting against God. And what I want us to understand that when God is in your every move, Whatever you decide to do, God, he's going to see you through. Unless the Lord is in it. Do you have God at the forefront of your life? Do you acknowledge to the Lord, Lord, I need you? Do, do you yield to the Lordship, to the sovereignty of God? To say, Lord, I need you. I need you in everything that I do. I can't, I can't build it, I can't do it, I can't accomplish anything apart from you. And when God is in it, then God, he makes sure things work out all right. What about you this morning? <coughs> have you, have you yielded to the Lordship <coughs> of the Lord? Have you given the reins over to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you in all that I I need you to guide me. If you have not come to that place of surrender to the Lord, then this morning, I want you to put God first in your life. Don't, don't allow God to occupy a place that's not reserved for him. There's only one place in your life that's reserved for God. That is the place of preeminence. God has to be first. And if God is in it, 
then Jesus assures us in Matthew 6, 33, that God's going to take care of us. Seek him above everything else. Put him first, and he will supply your needs. He'll take care of you. There may be one who has not give his, given his or her life to the Lord this morning. And right now, I want to give you this, this invitation to come to the Lord. Make sure God is in it. Make sure God is in the forefront of your life. Invitation to people who are unsaved. If you're here today, will you, will you come? If you have not given your life to the Lord. And to extend this invitation, I need to once again go back and reiterate the importance of having God in whatever we do, unless the Lord is in it, unless the Lord is in it. Please, as you move forward every day, be careful to acknowledge the Lord. Um, all of us sometimes pray what I call prayers on the fly. You know, we, we get up and maybe we cut ourselves short and we run off and we pray while we are commuting and, and God, God hears us. But I want to encourage you not to establish this kind of pattern as your norm. Please hear me today because God wants you to understand he needs you to invite him in, not to just try to work him in, but you got to think about God and you got to allow him to have that place of preeminence in your life. Get up early enough some mornings, if you don't do it every morning, get up early enough where you can talk to God. Don't, don't, don't get up in the morning and always go toward the news, go towards your iPhone, go toward the internet to see what's going on on Facebook. Get up in the morning. And make sure that God is a part of your morning. Make sure God is in it. Some people think that their day go better when they get up in the morning and they get a, a fresh cup of coffee, maybe a fresh cup of tea. That's, that's not how my life works. My life works better when I get up in the morning with God. When I get up and, and I ask the Lord to lead and to guide me, I ask God to be Lord in my life, to be Lord over this day. And, and let me tell you this, when, when, I, when I ask God to be Lord over my day, maybe some of you are getting, getting a little push, maybe dealing with some conviction because I ask God to be Lord in the lives of every member in this church. I ask God to be Lord in your lives, and I ask God to be Lord over your lives. And that's what God, that's where God needs to be. And then what God needs to be to us, he needs to be Lord. Not, not, and when I pray that prayer, I'm not just asking people to acknowledge the Lord. I'm asking people to yield to the leading of the Lord. That's what I'm asking him over your lives nearly every day. Lord, be Lord in their lives. Be Lord over their lives. Be Lord in their lives. Do what I need you to do. And, 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 and Jesus said, why call me Lord and don't do what I ask you to do? Yield to the sovereignty of the Lord. And God will bless you. There are those is our prayer today. Those is our prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for standing, my brother. Now, I know, as I said, people were telling me I'm in the heat too long, but it's it's all right. It's, it's, it's all right. And I thank you all for being concerned. And I can't say 
but I won't heed what you all are saying. I got one call saying, you know, you ought to leap for the hat on your head. <laughs> and, and Brother Ray was talking about putting a tent over here last week. <laughs> and he said it's too hard out there. But I'm good. I'm good. I praise God. I praise God for you all. I thank God for that young man right there who didn't want to press his way out here today. And Sandra said, she called me, texted me last night and said, you know, can we just sit in the inside? I said, yes, sit in there because he wants to come. I want him to be here. And so I thank you for being here today. Thank all of you for being here. God bless you. We're going to pray and I'll get you all out of this heat. Father, we bless your name today. Lord, we love you. And we know that you desire this place of preeminence in our lives. And sometimes, sometimes we fail to make sure that you're in it. We fail, Lord, to make sure that, that we involve you, we invite you in all that we do. Sometimes we fail, Lord. And, and I don't know if it's because, as someone said, life just happens. Or I, I don't know if it's because sometimes we feel as if we are invincible or we feel that we can just make it on our own. But the reality, Lord, from this psalm and so many other passages, we need you. We need you, God. All of our help, it comes from you. Lord, we need you. And sometimes we don't know how much we need you. But I pray that as I preach this message today, that as the psalmist said, as the deer patches for the water brook, Lord, my heart, it pants for you. Lord, I pray today that we don't forget about you. That we will invite you to sit in the premier seats in our lives so that you can orchestrate the affairs of our lives. I look back, God, and I understand that I messed up enough things when I didn't ask you to be the leader, to be the guide. I understand, God, that, that, that some decisions, some steps that I made when I didn't ask you to do what I preached today, I see the mistakes, God. But, but now, Lord, I understand that unless you're in everything that we do, we're going to have some problems. And even, Lord, when we have you in it, if we encounter problems, we understand that you are the problem solver. You'll work things out somehow. And I pray for every person today who's standing, who exited their car, who's saying that I need the Lord to be in it. Lord, take the reins. Take control of our lives. Lord, if we didn't, ask you to be in what we got into we want you in it now even if you have been an afterthought we have come to our senses we want you in it now even god if we're home the messed up we still want you to come in because you can straighten them out even god if our lives we made a mess out of things we want you to still come in because you can straighten things out in our lives even god in our relationships if it didn't start out right because we didn't invite you in, we want you to come in now, God. We yield to your sovereignty. You can work things out all right. Even, God, when we made some decisions and we thought that we were making the right decision, we need you right now, God. We want you to be in it, God. We want you to help us to get through our messes and help us to understand that we got to lean on you. God, I pray for those people. And right now, God, I, I pray for those young people Lord, that, who have forgotten about you. Some of them are our sons and daughters. Some of them are going down a path that we didn't teach them. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to them again. Let them know that they need you. 
Let them know, God, that even in the folly of their youth, when they think they know everything, when they think they got it all figured out, they don't know what they think they know. They need you, God. I pray for them. I pray that you'll draw them back to you in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that they'll understand how important it is to have you in their lives and in all that they do. Father, I ask you again for those today who need to be healed, that you heal their bodies because you are a healer. Those who need deliverance this morning, deliver them. Those who need salvation, save Father, this is our prayer today in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, before I close this prayer, I thank you for the applications that were sent for those who are looking for jobs. And so right now, Lord, I want to pray for the jobless people. And, and I want to ask, Lord, that you do it for them this week. I want to ask that you open up doors for them this week. Place them in places where maybe they didn't think it was possible for them to go. But you place them in those places today, Lord. And we're going to honor you. Will you do it, God? Will you do it for your glory? Do it for a testimony, for a witness to other people what you're able to do. We thank you and we praise you for it now in Jesus' name. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Join us on Thursday night. 7 p.m. for the phone conference and join us for Wednesday night at 6 30 p.m. for our Bible study session and and remember that you need God you need him in everything you do unless he's in it things are not going to go the way you want them to go look to the Lord now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. Give God some praise.